Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And for all the Trekkies out there, uh, and I'm a Trekkie, um, we have what I believe to be the first Star Trek themed Sudoku we've ever featured on the channel, which is an astonishing oversight on our part um, and something we need to correct. And we're happy to do that today with Tenor Learman's puzzle, um, which, oh, I should colour it in actually to show you. Um, he calls this one Federation Starship versus Romulan Bird of Prey. Uh, let me get the colours right. I think those were green and then these were meant to be blue up here. Um, so we can reveal we can reveal the battle in all its glory. Um, here we go. Now this, uh, this comes with a health warning. Uh, this has five out of five stars for difficulty over on Logic Masters Germany, where they are not known um, for overgrading the difficulty of their puzzles. Um, and uh, it's hugely popular amongst those people who have managed to solve it, uh, that small coterie. Um, I hope to add my, my, my own name to those numbers in the next course of the next three and a half hours. Um, let's hope I can do just that. I'll read you the rules in a moment. Um, now now, before we get on to the rules, I have two updates to mention. One, literally an update. Um, our Miracle Sudoku app has just been updated. So do make sure that you uh, you press that button on your, your device that, that makes it update because there are loads of new puzzles there now. I think we've added 20. Um, so uh, they should be ready as I speak. So um, yeah, check that out and we hope that you enjoy them. Um, also, the 2nd of February is, of course, Groundhog Day. Also, the 2nd of February is, of course, Groundhog Day. Um, and our, our monthly reward puzzle on, over on Patreon, which we'll release tomorrow, which isn't Groundhog Day, but that's when we're going to release it because it's the first of the month, is themed on Groundhog Day. Um, so do check that out. We know that you'll enjoy the puzzles. And we need to shout out and give a big thanks to the brilliant constructor from the Philippines, Sed Holason, for helping us uh, to set those. Um, so, yeah, as I say, over on Patreon tomorrow, there's lots of fun to be had. Now, I do have, I'm afraid, some bad news. Um, despite uh, yesterday's video, we have not yet heard from Sting or from Steve Martin or from Selena Gomez or Martin Short to confirm whether or not Mark did beat Sting in the in the crossword uh, the crossword race that we had yesterday. So you can see Sting holding the Financial Times crossword there. He apparently whizzed through it. Mark got through it as well in about six and a half minutes. You can see the video. It was yesterday we released it on the channel. Um, Mark was explaining the clues as he went along. And we are waiting to hear. So if anyone has a way of finding out the the actual result, we await it with bated breath. Um, now, what are the rules of Tenor Learman's puzzle? Let me read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So completely standard killer Sudoku rules. Uh, that means those four squares, for example, have to sum to 21, and you can't repeat a digit. So whatever you put in there, you cannot put into either of those squares, for example, because even though Sudoku would suggest you could, killer Sudoku suggests you can't. Um, now also, the digits on a grey line must form a palindrome, i.e. the string of digits must read the same forwards and backwards. So we have our Romulan bird of prey here made up of palindrome lines. So that means, well, it's easier to see with this long line, I think. So whatever we put into those, well, let's put some digits in. Let's put one, two and three in. So if these were one, two and three, we would know that these would have to be one, two, and three in that order. So let's carry on going. Six is in. There's a center to this palindrome, look. Um, so now we can test whether we've done this properly. We can read out the digits this way. One, two, three, six, eight, six, three, two, one. And if we read them out the other way, it should sound the same. So one, two, three, six, eight, six, three, two, one. You can see it is the same. This would be a valid arrangement of the palindrome. And that is what we need to achieve. Obviously, we've got some very small palindrome lines here, which is basically just telling us that those digits are the same digit. Um, now, digits are, here's, in fact, here, here it is confirmed. Digits on the palindrome can repeat if allowed by the other rules. Um, Finally, grey circles can only contain odd digits. So we've got two grey circles on the Enterprise here. Those have to be odd. Uh, and that's it. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and 
we can immediately see that there are no useful killer Sudoku cages, no givens, no useful cages. These are things that I have become used to over the months. Um, no, they are useless. I can put a one in the 13 cage. There you go. That's about as good as I can do. There must be a one in a four cell 13 cage because two, three, four, and five add up to 14. In fact, there must be a one in a five cell 18 cage for a similar reason. 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 adds up to 20. So, yeah, that's not going to work if we can't have a 1 in there. Uh, right. There's a sort of weird symmetry around among... We've got these 9, 13 cages around the edges here. I don't know what that means. But it just seems remarkably symmetric. Uh, no, I haven't got a clue. Okay. Right, I think we're going to have to look at the palindrome with hope because if we can't do anything with the palindrome, we are in serious trouble. So let us, we'll look at the first. So we know that whatever's at this side of the palindrome must have a mirror here. So probably we're going to want to color these in. Ah, yeah, look, this is nice. Straight away, this is nice. Let's use purple to see why it's nice because where can... In fact, it's only one set. Where can purple go in box nine? Those can't be purple. These can't be purple. That's easy to see by Sudoku. What would happen if we made any of those squares purple? Well, the problem is we get a repeated digit in a row or a column because any of these three digits reflects via their palindrome to be one of those squares. But none of these yellow squares could be purple because they would definitely see an existing purple in the grid. So purple can't go in those squares or these squares. So that square is purple. And that is already quite lovely. Um, so that means one of those is purple and one of these is purple. Um, don't know what that means. I don't think I don't think we can do anything with that. Let's look at cells, the second cell on the palindrome. So this time, oh, I thought I made a mistake then because I was like looking at that thinking, no, none of these can be green, but they can. This one can be. So let's, this is lovely. So none of those squares can be green by Sudoku. If this is green, if either of these two cells are green, they would reflect via their palindrome to those two squares and they would clash with the greens that we're putting in the grid. So only this square can be green, and it can be green because this cell doesn't see that one or that one. It's just out of alignment. So these two squares are green, which means green is in one of these, one of these, one of these, and one of these. I don't know what that means either, but it's, again, rather beautiful. Um, let's keep going. Let's go to the next cell on the palindrome. So now those squares can't be. Yeah, this is the same again. So now green and green is obviously a different digit to blue. So this cannot be blue. So one of these three squares has to be blue. Well, if it was either of these two squares, you can see via their palindromes, you would get a repeated blue in box six or box eight. That's not going to work. So we can get rid of all of those squares and the corner. We must put blue in the corner. Um, right. So that's putting blue into the same column, top of the column that purple was in. Same thing down this side at the start of row seven. Um, Right, I don't know what to do with that, so I'm going to carry on. Those two squares are the next lines on the palindrome. We'll make those red. So these ones, just looking at this, because I can't actually see which one of those they go in. Uh, no, I mean, unless I'm missing something there, we don't. I know it's in one of those two, but I don't think I do know which one it's in, do I? 
I don't think Sudoku tells me. I know quite a lot about the colours of various cells, but I know almost nothing about the quantum of each of these digits. Um, there's got to be a red in one of those cells. Oh, I think I might see this actually. Hang on a minute. Yeah, okay, I do. S well, I see something. It's not express. I can't just lock this cell into one of these two positions or this one. But this domino I can do it with. If I make both of these squares red, let's look at this, this these two squares together. Where do these two squares together go in this box? Now we can see, it's, it's very easy to see, that these two digits are not blue, they're not purple, and they're not green. So they don't go in those squares. They don't go in these squares by Sudoku. And they can't go in these two squares, because then when they reflect on their palindromes, they'll clash in box six. So they don't go there either. So these squares can only go in those squares. So there's like a... It's like a, a double relationship. But we don't know what the order is. Still, I know I don't know which which one of these two this one is. Now, okay, and by symmetry, presumably that's the same with. So is that must this be red as well? So we've got if we if this if these are both red. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So these these squares are the same digits actually. In fact, that's really cool. So. Because, because this domino maps to exactly the same cells in box 9 that this domino does. So, but I still don't know which way round this goes. So I know this domino and this domino are now the same. I don't think, I think it makes more sense to keep them both the same colour rather than to split. Because obviously these two squares now must be the same colour because these two must be the same. I'm not sure about that. Oh, that's, these, these are high quality dilemmas. I don't know what to do with them. Um, now, yeah, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. So now there is a virtual 10 cage in box nine because where do those two cells go in box nine? Well, whatever's in these two squares cannot appear in these two squares because if it, if the if the you know if this is a six oh whoopsie I didn't mean to do that um, if this is a six and you try and put a six here it will reflect via the palindrome and you'll get a repeated six in the box so this domino whatever is in this domino doesn't appear in there therefore it appears in here and these cells are the same so this is a ten cage which means this is a 10 cage. So all of these squares are the same. I'm running out of colors here. Um, I will make this orange, shall I? No, I don't like that. That does that offends me at some chromatic level. Um, I'll make them gray, that looks better. So this is a 10 cage and this is a 10 cage. Now, presumably this, we do the same with the eight. Yeah, we've got an eight cage that must map here and here. Can I make those light grey? Maybe, oh, that's very light grey. I can just about see it, but I think I will remember that these are eight anyway. And I don't want to use that orange colour because it seems to annoy me as regards its relationship to the red. I suppose I could make them yellow maybe. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, we'll make them yellow. Okay, so we reach this position. We've got a lot of colouring, no digits, no, well, I'll count these as pencil marks in the interests of not feeling like a buffoon, but um, well, what am I meant to do with this? So I've got, I now know that's a 10 cage and that's an 8 cage. So I've got 18 accounted for in box 6 in 4 cells, but that means the other 5 cells add to 27, which is not a propitious number. Um, okay. What am I meant to do now? I've got... I've got 
felt that horrible feeling that I have missed something profoundly important about this puzzle and its structure because the... I mean, this logic was all gorgeous down here, but it doesn't seem to have done anything at all. Have we got... Uh, um... Is there something I can do with the cages somehow that a 13 cage and a 13 cage, 26. So those have to add up to 19. That's also useless. Ah, bobbins. Um, okay. <laughs> we can... Sorry about this. I actually am a. I quite often go quiet on the channel when I'm completely stuck, but I don't like the feeling of where I'm actually. I've got nothing even to say about how to get unstuck here. I'm sure that this this must be important. It felt so. Um, the logic felt really beautiful as to how you sort of describe these colours and the fact that the 10 cage is mapping through and the 8 cage is mapping through. That is gorgeous. So this is a 10 cage, this is an 8 cage, this is a 10 cage, this is an 8 cage. Ah, now that's given me an idea, actually. That's given me an idea. Right, OK. Um, ah, aha, I have you now. Let us... I can definitely do something. I haven't got quite got my head around what it is, but it's something to do with um, column 6 and row 6, because I can... That I think I'm going to be able to get some sort of relationship between these squares because, let me explain, the, the positions of these cages is a bit suspicious once you think about these squares because, uh, let's look at the box totals. What do we know about those cells there, those 27 cells? Well, I've said this once or twice on the channel before, but I know those cells there will add up to 45 because that's we know the box in the finished solution will contain all the digits from 1 to 9. Add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So this adds to 45, this adds to 45, and this adds to 45. That's 135 amongst those yellow cells. But look what Tenaliraman has done here. These cages are very, very sort of nicely designed to go round this sort of L bend here. Now, what have we, what's that one add up to? 18. We've got 18, 17, 35, 56, 68 in these squares. So this is 68. We know that altogether this is 135. So this sort of backward L bend here is 67. Now, Let's get this right. I hate this sort of. Th I hate doing this sort of thing on camera because I'm so prone to getting the signs the wrong way round. That right. So this is 67. What is this whole row plus this whole column? Well, this whole column plus this whole. That's obviously a whole row is equal to 45. It's one set of the digits one to nine. A whole column is another set of the digits 1 to 9. So, so this, these cells are equal to 90 minus that cell, which is double counted. Obviously, if I add all of those cells and then, then I add all of those cells, I'm double counting this one. So this sort of cross that we can draw in the grid is, is equal to 90 minus this square. But we also know that this 
half of the cross is equal to, is it 67? So if we add on those squares, these three at the bottom of column six and these three at the end of row six. Yeah, this is gorgeous, this is gorgeous. So, so we know that this is 67 plus these three, these triples here. So 67 plus these triples is equal to 90 minus this square. If I, if I, if this leads anywhere, I will put this on the screen as a card if I remember. <laughs> I wish I could see the card now. So let's just do this once more time. 67 plus this triple plus this triple is equal to 90 minus this square. So this triple plus this triple plus this square oh hang on a minute is this i think there was a shortcut way of getting to this anyway i'll come back to that six so yeah this triple plus this triple plus this square is equal to to 90 minus 67 which is 23. right now this is but this is beautiful why is this beautiful well it's because we know that this domino, because of the amazing geometry at the start of the puzzle, this adds up to 10, and this adds up to 8. So now, we can, re we can sort of change this round a bit. We now get this square plus this square plus this square is equal to 23 minus 10 minus 8, which is 5. So these three squares add up to 5 QED. That is absolutely beautiful and I'm now thinking uh, I'm not sure but there, there is some trick isn't there that I've looked at before Ard van der Vettering's trick around five by fives and four by fours I'm, I, I think that might be the simpler way of doing this but anyway that's that's by the by I've done it this way and I've got some answers so this is good we've now got yeah, we've now got these three squares add up to five, but the two purple squares are the same digit. So, so we can't even put three in here. If you put three in there, we've already, this would have to be minus one. It can't be minus one. So these two squares are one or two. If they're one, this must be three. If they're two, this must be one. And look, look now, we can be able to reflect these options through all of these cells. So all of these now, those three are one or three. Purple is one or two. Um, is that good? So, so, pur so, if purple is one, if this is one, this is three. If this is two, this is one. So you always have a one. You always have a one in one of those two squares. And that means that the eight cage, which is mirroring onto this, this domino here, is not one seven. So the eight cage is either two, six or three, five by the method of madness. Um, so if this is, if this is one, this is three, this is two, six. If this is two, this is one. Yeah, oh, this is gorgeous because this affects the 10 gauge. Now, let's think about the digits one, two, and three and where they appear in box nine. And the answer is we don't know where they appear except that they must appear in three of those four squares because when this is one and this is three, this becomes two, six. So the one, two, three have been used. When this is two and this is one, this becomes three, five and the one, two, three have been used. Why does this matter? Well, what do we make the 10 cage then? If we can't use one, two or three, you can only use four and six. And we actually, we actually know that. So these are all become four and six. The six, yeah, the six removes the two, six option from that one. And the three, five that the eight cage has now become, let's put all the three fives in, fixes this square as being a one, which means green is one which means 
purple is two and we have digits and that is well that's quite extraordinary um quite extraordinary from tenor Learman and very very cool um now so these squares have got to be seven eight and nine which means these are all seven eight and nine as well we've got what have we got now we've got so we've got these nine cages on both sides of the grid each of which sees a one and a two so the options for the nine cages are now restricted. They're three, six, or four, five. So seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so now, now there's, there's more weirdness going on now. These two squares in there, because, because there's a three, four, five, six quadruple in column nine and row nine, those squares are seven, eight, and nine. I'm not sure what that means. Um, <laughs> I've got no idea. Right, okay, so we've got to think again. We've got three, five in this column pointing at the odd digit. So that odd digit is not three, five, it's one, seven, or nine. It's not nine uh, because that's in a an 18 cage if you put nine in there the other four squares have got to add up to nine and you can't do that you get rid of seven as well if we get if we had seven in there we'd have to have one two three and five one no oh yeah look this doesn't work if that was seven these squares would have to add up to 11. They'd have to be one, two, three, and five. We've got a four, six pair in, in column six already. So this square, you couldn't put four, six in here. You couldn't put it in there. You'd have to make this square simultaneously four and six. There's no Schrodinger cells. So this square is a one. One can be removed from the rest of this. One. Oh, it gets rid of a nine in the 13 cage now. Because if this if this was nine, you'd have to have one three here. You can we do better than that? Does this need need to have a two in it now? Uh, yeah, it does. It does need to have a two, and we know where the two goes because these two squares are now either adding up to six or five without using a one. So they're either two four or three or two three. Either way round, there's a two in them, and the two must go here by Sudoku. The th the three five pair here sees that one. That's a four, which makes this a seven. Um, that means that means that one is a seven. Oh, that means that one is a seven. But we don't know which one that means because red can be either way round. Ah, uh, bobbins. That's no good. Um, Four though fixes that four by Sudoku look, and again we don't know where the ten cage goes down here. We can't put four five into the nine cage now, so this is three six. That's good. That fixes that one. That's five. That's five. That's three. That's three. Um, now that means. This one is not seven, so blue is not seven, uh, which we already knew actually, if I'd actually just followed through with my pencil marks. One must be in one of these two squares. Three, four, five must be in one of those two squares. One, three, five. <laughs> um, now can I do the same thing? I so I use the 13 cage at the top to get traction. Oh, but I got the traction via the odd digit. Can I limit this odd digit? No. Ah, oh, no, that's, that's really interesting. This one sees nothing like as useful. 
This one sees, saw the three and the five and was positioned in a cage whereby it couldn't be seven or nine. This one sees almost nothing. Uh, three, five, two. One, three, five, two is eleven. Oh, nearly. So, 1, 3, 5 and 2 in row 6. In box 4, we've got to put the 1, 3, 5 and 2 into the 12 and the 21 cage. Our 12 and 21 add to 33, obviously. So these 7 cells add to 33. And we know 4 of them add up to 11. So the other 3 add to 22, which would normally be marvellous. Except it's not marvellous here because we can repeat a digit. This square can repeat in that square. So we can't use our normal tricks with three cells that add to 22 to say, oh, there's got to be a nine and things like that because we might have a repeated digit. Three, five, and two. So if we've got one, three, square, that square, yeah, the only thing we can say is that this square has to be this square has to be relatively high because if it's not we won't get there. If we've got 11 in f 4 of these 6 cells, if this square was this square was 4 that doesn't work because that using our 22 that means that two of these squares have to add up to 18, which is too high. It can't be a five here because of the five in here. So this square is six, seven, eight, or nine, which is not a great restriction. It's getting towards a quadruple. Ooh, there's no one in the 17 cage, look. So there must be a 2 in it, because 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 adds to 18. So there's definitely a 2 in there. Don't think we know where it goes. Um, maybe we do. I'm not seeing how to see that. Uh, This 7 is removing a 7 from the, the bottom of this 13 cage. Oh, this is important. Look, if that's 9, this square can't be a 1 or a 3 because of the 1-3 pair there. So this is not 9, this is 8. That gives us this digit and this digit. So 9 is now blue. Blue is 9. 9 must be in 1... Yeah, hang on, let's look at this. So nine, this is weird, isn't it? So I still I still don't know which way round the seven and the eight go. Even though I know these are seven and eight, I don't think I've got a way of telling how you fill them in. Nine has got to be in one of those two squares. Nine is not here anymore, so this one's a bit more restricted. Oh, that's yeah, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Look, look at the seven and the eight here. Th these two squares are the same. In fact, it would be easier if I coloured these in. I'm going to colour these in a different colour. Uh, am I or am I not? No, I'm not going to because I'll I'll have to use orange, the dreaded orange. Look, there we go. So these two squares are the same colour. These two squares are the same colour. So this square sees an orange and it sees a red, i.e. it sees a 7-8 pair. Because whatever this is, this will be the same, so this will be different. So this cannot be a 7 or an 8. It's only got the option of being a 6. And that means... I'm sure it means something <laughs> that's more powerful than just putting the 6 in. Um, does it? Maybe. Or well, maybe I come back to the 13 cage now, because now these two squares have got to add up to 5. So this square here has got to be a 2 or a 4. This square has got to therefore be a 1 or a 3. And that way we don't actually know 
what they are. Still don't know what the nine cage is either. How long have I had on the puzzle? 35 minutes, gosh. That's flown by. Um, six here. Oh no, that's good. That's good, a six here, because I had to make 22 with the other three digits. If one of the digits is a six, I now have to make the, the two digits that stay in these boxes add up to 16 in two digits. That's got to be seven and nine. So we now know exactly what's in these cages. It is, it's one, two, three, five, seven and nine. And let's do a quick check on that. So that's 11 plus 16 27 plus 6 is 33, which is what we're after. Um, that square's odd, so it's not 2. <laughs> That's not done much for the world, has it? Um, it can't be 9 either, because if it's 9, you have to put a 1 2 pair there, and that 1 will clash. We we'll get rid of another digit. Uh, Oh, I don't know what we do. Well, we know what these three squares are, I suppose. We know that they've got to be the other digits. So they are four, six, and eight. That one's not eight. These two squares are a, ooh, these two squares are a seven and a nine, which means we've basically engaged the Borg, haven't we? Because now we get these sorted out. Nine and seven go in. Seven and eight go in. Eight and seven go in. And does it go further than that? Well, we can get rid of seven from all of these squares now. We can get rid of nine from all of those squares and one. Now, sorry about this. If you guys are seeing what I'm missing here, it's quite possible. Um, I've got a 5-9 pair at the top of that column, look. And those squares have got to be a 1-8 pair. 5-9 and 1-8. don't see how to resolve that. I've got a 4 by Sudoku in the middle of the grid. There's 4s in one of those two. There's a 4 here. So that becomes a 4. So in this row, this square's got to be 2, 3, or 5. That can't be 2, there's a 2 at the bottom. So there is a 2 in one of those cells. Oh, look, no, hang on, we can do some, we can do some easy partitioning of the digits here. The 9, look, has to be in the 21 cage. So there's a 9 in the 21 cage and a 6 in the 21 cage. That's 15, which means the other two squares have got to add up to 6. And there's no 4 available. So 1 and 5 is the only way this works. So these squares are 1, 5 and 9. In fact, this square is just a 5. It sees a 1 and a 9 in its row. Which means those squares, we can just delete the options for these squares and fill them in. These squares have got to be 2, 3 and 7. That's not seven. Ah, and it's odd. Perfect. So it's three. Three fixes this this down here. That becomes one and four. The four fixes, whoopsie, fixes the four and the six, which fixes the four and the six. Um, the four. So now we do finally work out that this is three, six, as, as was that one. But it took a lot longer to do that which means this is three and this is five. That, oh no, that doesn't work. Um, the five here fixes the three here. So these squares now, we, we know what they are. They've got to be two, five and eight. With that not being five, this not being eight, and this not being two. So there's definitely, ah, okay, there's definitely a 2 in the 17 cage in one of those two squares. So that's no longer 2. So we've got 6 in here. We need 11 more. So if this is 8, this has to be 3, which looks possible. If this is 5, we need to put 6 in here. And that is also, I don't believe it, that's also possible. Ah, 
Um, ah, okay. Um, so we're going to have to look somewhere else. This four fixes the six. Oh, the 13 cage is probably done, is it? Yeah, it is. Look, four and seven in the row. So this is a five, eight pair. This eight down here fixes the order. Eight and five. This eight fixes the eight and the four. Four has to be in one of these squares. Still not put nine in column one. You can't put nine in a 13 cage. So nine goes there. This square's got to be two or seven. The nine fixes the nine and the five over on this side of the grid. Oh, it's not quite working with the five. I was hoping I was going to get the five, but I haven't got the five. Um, oh, nine though. Nine can't go in the 18 cage, so this has got to be nine. So these squares have become restricted. They are a 3-6 pair, and that's nice because I've got 3-6 pairs in both columns now. So this is a 2 or a 5. Uh, still can't quite resolve this. So this is a 2-9 pair. <laughs> <laughs> These squares have got to be seven and something. Five and seven. Ah, five here. Good. Five and seven going that way round. Seven. Oh, seven is locked into the 13 cage now. Well, that's massive because once there's a seven in a 13 cage of size four, it must be seven, one, two, and three. So there's no four in it, that's for sure. Four is there. Let's put the options in for this, these squares and see if we can see an easy way to... Well, it gives us this square. That's a 6. That's a 3. That means this is a 6, which means we need a 5 in the uh, 17 cage, which means we, there's no 8 in it. This becomes a 2. That becomes a 2. That becomes a 7. Uh, this becomes a 1-3 pair. The 2 here fixes the 2 and the 7. And the two and the nine, and the nine and the one, and the one and the three, and the three and the six, they all get sorted out. The one and the eight, and I think we're there. Three and six. And this is this is an incredibly clever puzzle. Uh, and not easy. Um, although hopefully I think I'm finding my way to the end of it. So what do I need? I need five and seven there. So five goes here, seven goes here. It looks correct. I will click check. Yes, did it. 43 minutes. Not too bad, I don't think, for that one. I was a bit slow in places. I hope you'll forgive me that. And I hope you enjoyed it just, well, half as much as I did. Brilliant puzzle, Tenaliriman. Very enjoyable. And especially if you're a Star Trek fan, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and we'll see you later on for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.